Good morning. Two weeks ago, we started with this part, which is Jacob's weight base. And you saw me make the wooden mold case, and you saw me make the silicone rubber blanket. This week, I'm gonna make the copy out of fiberglass. Stick around, it should be fun. What do I always say? Test, 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 right? So I thought, <laughs> I thought it'd be a good idea if I took my own advice. And since I am using this resin, which is an epoxy gel coat, and with this hardener, so this system, and I'm using this parting agent, which is a petroleum-based parting agent, and of course I'm using this rubber, which is the same rubber I always use, the, the uh, uh, pouring rubber, silicone pouring rubber. Uh, I thought it would be a good idea to test them. So what I did was I made this handy little test right here, um, and I just hosed this old mold down with this material, poured some of the epoxy on there, let it cure, and it worked out perfectly. So now I can proceed with a high degree of confidence that this epoxy resin is gonna work with this rubber and this release agent. And that's the point. The point is test all your materials together on small tests because you don't want to do a whole big mold and then find out you're screwed. <laughs> you know, something horrible goes wrong. It doesn't cure, it hurts the rubber. You know, there are all kinds of disasters can befall you. If you don't know the materials, if you haven't worked with them, it's been a long time, I have to admit, it's been a long time since I did fiberglass with this epoxy resin. So I thought, good idea is to test it first. I mixed up 200 grams of the resin and just wanted to remind you that uh, the material data sheet is your friend. <laughs> Read the material data sheets. This resin has a mix ratio of 100 parts of the black of the resin to 16 and a half parts of the hardener. And that's pretty crazy. I mean, it's half a, half a percent, 16 and a half. And my theory about why they do that is so that you're not casual about the mix ratio. You know, when the manufacturer says, oh, it's gotta be 16 and a half percent, you gotta figure, okay, they're serious. They don't want you mixing it like, oh yeah, I'll put a little in there. You know, you gotta be accurate when you weigh this stuff out and it's by weight. So I weighed it out over at the scale. Now I'm gonna fill the deepest part. This is a gel coat. And what a gel coat is, is this the color coat? This is the surface of the part that we're making here. So we really wanna make sure that this material is well mixed and not any fooling around with that. You don't wanna have like uncured mass of resin in your epox, your beautiful epoxy. <laughs> getting it all mixed up nice, stirring from the bottom, scraping the bottom, scraping the sides. You really want to make sure you are well blended here. Now I'm also mixing air into this, but it's a gel coat, which means I'm gonna lay out a very thin coat and I may hit it with the heat gun afterwards. We'll see what happens. But I wanna start here with these deeper sections of the, of the mold and I wanna flow the resin down in there and make sure that it fills those up. So I'm gonna just do it like that. Filling in, letting the resin flow into the deeper sections. and Fill the bottoms of those cavities, pushing the air out. Big fan of letting the resin force the air out and not trapping bubbles. I'm just flowing this material in. Very nice. I'll flow it around the bottom. I want to make sure that it fills these grooves in the design really well. So again, I'm just flowing it out. I feel like the parts that I'm pouring now are the most critical. You really want these to catch all of the detail in this surface and not catch bubbles in there. Okay, so that's just flowing out just fine. Let's see if we can't help it. I'm always leery about the part of the resin when I scrape the cup, because I'm always worried that that's the part of the resin that's not as well mixed, maybe as other parts. So I really kind of stir it up. Well, I, I tell you what, I didn't mix that much bubbleage into this resin. It's looking pretty good. Let's start to use a brush 
push this stuff around. Okay, so you get the idea. This is a, I'm just painting on a thick, solid, even coat of this resin. And this is the skin. This is the decorative part. This is the part you're gonna see. You'll not see any of the fiberglass. So I'm being super careful to paint out any bubbles. Make sure that surface is properly painted out. And we'll come up and paint up the sides. You know what I didn't do? I didn't put any release agent on this part. I totally forgot to put release. However, I'm not overwhelmingly worried about it because I was told by the manufacturer that it wouldn't be strictly necessary and I wouldn't have any problems if I chose not to use a release agent. I like to use a release agents because epoxy is a really aggressive resin, but I forgot, frankly. So we're gonna go naked. All right, I think you get the idea. This is how you put on a gel coat. And here's the finished gel coat, looking mighty purdy. Turns out I had to do three coats and that's because I kept catching these little holidays in the, in the coat and that's where the resin would pull away from the rubber. And so I could see little flecks of blue rubber peeking through the gel coat and that's no good. So it took three coats to defeat that small problem. But now it's looking pretty good and it's ready for fiberglass. Next step is to break out the fiberglass. And obviously it's in big sheets, so that's no good. We're gonna have to cut it into smaller pieces. So let's do that. I'm just gonna cut it into a bunch of small chunks because that is gonna make it much easier to work with. Let's see if I can cut that much stuff at once. That would be useful if I could. Oh yeah. Let's just have different size of chunkies of fiberglass. I think some different length of pieces and shape of pieces is gonna be useful. Just gonna have a nice collection of pieces so that when we go to do the actual laminating, we'll have lots of different shapes. All right, got our fiberglass ready to go. I'll probably cut up more, but I'll do that off camera because you don't need to watch me cut fiberglass. You get it. We just, lots of different small pieces, patches, and we're gonna do a lamination where we patch it all together. Uh, and we'll do that starting right now. Time to lay down some fiberglass. So, this is another resin that has a uh, funky mix ratio of 100 parts to 29 parts, not 30 parts, <laughs> 29 parts of hardener to 100 parts of res. So we're gonna mix it super thoroughly because again, we don't want like partial, partial mixes going on here. I can feel it down in the bottom of the cup. It's still really thick down there. I think my working time is around a half an hour if I read the material data sheet, right? And I did read the material data sheet. So we are pretty well mixed. I go. My stick gave up a goober. I'll see if I can get it out of there. Did, okay. All right, this, this feels pretty well mixed to me. Let's just go ahead and wet out the mold. I reserve some in the cup, a little bit. Don't need to do much. Generally speaking, most resins will cure up faster in a mass, in a lump, uh, than they will cure out if you spread them out in a sheet. Kind of hurrying because I don't have a huge amount of time. All right, let's start to lay some, some cloth down in there. Let's see how we go. We're just gonna build up lots and lots and lots and lots of layers of cloth. Go through, coat through the whole thing in one layer. And I'm just gonna keep doing this for uh, quite a while. You see what I'm doing? I'm just putting in the fiberglass, pushing it into the shape. 
of the thing. Uh, and I'm just gonna keep doing this till I get the whole thing completely coated in fiberglass. Just lay in pieces and work it in. Just lay in lots and lots of pieces, one layer at a time, and work it in. And that is how you do that. So you lay it all in like that, and you just work it down in. Get it in there all the way. Get it to really wrap and shape itself, thoroughly wet itself in all the corners, everywhere, all the details. Okay, I'm gonna keep doing this for quite a while. This is gonna take me a solid half an hour, 45 minutes. And I'll come back to you when I've got it pretty well laminated up. I got all the fiberglass laid on. Turned out to be about uh, three separate mixes of resin and fiberglass. Just layered it on as you saw me do. Nothing more fancy than what I already showed you. Just lots of layers and, and a little bit of time invested. So it's looking good and it's pretty hard. What I don't like is the look of the interior of the piece. So I decided to finish it and then make it uh, look nicer, even though it is the underside and nobody's gonna see it. But anyway, I thought I'd put a gel coat layer uh, on the inside too, black, so it would match the outside. And I think that's gonna look a lot nicer uh, on the piece. So let's brush on what should be the final layer of resin on this project. And then we can declare victory. We're just gonna brush on nice even coat black resin. Just wanna make sure I get it all the way up the walls. Looks good. <laughs> it's the next day and our tray is hard as a rock. Beautiful. <laughs> so let's take it apart. And in order to do that, I'm just gonna probably, I think I'm gonna need to unscrew it. So let's go ahead and unscrew this thing. Try to make it so you guys can see what I'm doing. See how far apart we're gonna need to take it. Well, we'll definitely need to take these bottom screws off, at least on one side. Get this thing apart. Exciting. Looking forward to seeing this thing. Hope it came out good. <laughs> Beautiful. All right. Take this thing apart. Just like that. Nice. All right. Now, one of the issues that we have to confront is what do we do about trimming the base? If I was going to make 100 of these or even 20 of them or 10, I suppose, I would set up some kind of a jig on a machine to trim the fiberglass off. But since I only have to make one of these, just kind of trim off the hairy bits with the scissors while I contemplate how I think I'm going to go about trimming off the excess fiberglass. Not sure yet how I'm going to do that, but I think we're going to do it in sort of a one-off manner. All right, that's a tiny bit neater. Got to be careful when you handle fiberglass. They don't call it glass for nothing. It's sharp. So we can move all this stuff out of the way. Keep all our assembly screws out of the way. Okay. All right. Are you ready? <laughs> okay, please let it come out beautifully. Let it be magnificent. Come on, baby. Again, once again, we... Jamslow is the way to go. Pull it out slow and easy. Oh, it looks like it has a good finish on it. You gotta break that suction, boy. Definitely have to break that suction. There it goes. There it goes. Okay, that one's that side came out. It's mostly just a matter of breaking the suction. Getting the rubber to let go of the part. 
slow and easy. Don't want to tear the rubber. There it goes. Okay, are you ready? It's going to come right out now. It should just fall out. There we go. Nice. I'm going to let you guys see it before I see it. <laughs> I haven't even looked at it yet. What do we think? Does it look good? What are we doing here? What do you guys think? Does it look good? I can't even tell. All right, I'm going to look at it. First time I see it. Let's take a look, see what I've done. <sighs> yeah, pretty nice. Not bad at all. Reproduction is good. I think it's bubble free. Look at it. Looks pretty darn good. Hard as a rock. All right. Nice. Yep. Now we knew that it was, boy, I tell you what, it reproduces every little ding, every little, every little divot that's in the, you know, all these little flaws. I'm looking, I'm going, oh, boy, there's all these little flaws. It's all scratched. Yeah, they're all in the original. <laughs> the silicone is amazing stuff. This stuff, you know, reproduces. I knew that it would reproduce every single tiny little flaw in the original. And sure enough, it did. Like these little things in here are a little dinged up. Just like they are in the original. This is a little dinged up. <sighs> That's pretty amazing. All right, cool. Well, uh, we made just about a perfect, uh, perfect reproduction. And all that's left to do is for me to trim off this flash of uh, fiberglass, sand those edges smooth, and we've got a finished part. Pretty nice, that'll work out okay. All right, this came out pretty nice, so let's go clean these edges up with some sandpaper. I'm looking at the two parts here, and uh, this is the original right here. And this is the copy. The copy just picked up the most microscopic, every little microscopic flaw, every flaw that's in this original is in the copy. I mean, the silicone rubber is amazing stuff. It just picks up every little detail, even to the point, like, I don't can you see this? Look at that shiny spot on the copy and look at the shiny spot on the original. There's another one up here. There's a little divot, just a shiny little divot right there in the copy picked it up perfectly from the original. You can go through the entire thing and just flawless reproduction. I mean, it's just every little, even then down in here, I, I, when I first pulled this out, I went, wow, these are all chewed up and they're not just, God, did I catch flaws in the mold and everything? Nope, they're exactly the same as the original. So uh, silicone rubber is amazing. It will, it will give you a flawless casting. So I'm gonna give, let's see, out of seven, out of 10, I'm going to give this a seven and a half. That's my rating. And you might say, well, hold it. I mean, it's, it's visually, can you tell them apart? Uh, no. The, visually, they're very, very hard to tell apart. The fiberglass one is quite a bit heavier. I kind of overbuilt it. I wanted it to be super strong and not have any chance of, of, of bending or warping under the weight set. This one's lighter. So why am I giving it a seven and a half? out of 10, it's because there are some casting flaws. For instance, I'm not loving this, the way this didn't, cast, this did not, I don't feel like that cast perfectly. I had a, one little holiday here where the, uh, the gel coat pulled away that I didn't see. Uh, just in general, this, the, the, the cast, I would have liked to have seen a nice, clean, sharp edge, like most of it, all throughout. And in here, I feel like, that's just not, you know, as good. Now, it will not impact the function. It will not impact the thing visually. So I'm still going to call it a success. And I think that uh, 
Jacob's going to be able to use it and uh, no problems, and it's going to work for him great. So, you know, overall, I'm going to call the project a success, but uh, you go for perfection every time. You never get it, but you go for it. If you like this video, hit the like button. And uh, thank you so much for subscribing and continue to sign up new subscribers every week. Welcome to all of you. I'm very grateful that you're here. Um, this was viewer project number two. So uh, if you have a project, if you have anything that you think would be fun to watch me do on the channel or you just something you don't know how to do and hit me up, let me know and we'll take a look at it and maybe we'll do it sometime soon. I really appreciate you guys watching. See you next week.